won't be any pushing around because we have security. My guest today is a bad man, Majama. Very right. excited. I've known this guy a long time. We go back to the Friday Night Videos days. Right. He was the Mac of Friday Night Videos. Look it up on YouTube, kids. You're going to find that out. This man is a, a writer. He's been on every late night talk show. You knew him as Mouse on Jamie Foxx show. That's and right. of course, of course, of course, he has a worldwide cult following uh, as a character he played in Don't Be a Menace to Success. To, to, don't Be a Menace, Menace to South Central. To, it was to South Central? To South Central. Wow. While you're drinking your gin and juice in the hood. Woo! Yeah, Give it up for crazy legs. That's Andrew right. McCullough. What's up, y'all? I'm in the house. Oh, we're gonna save the hood. Yeah, we go. We yeah, I, I, I brought my hood. You brought your hood. This is my first. We're gonna get hooded up. We are hooded up. We're yeah. drinking tonight. Yeah, yeah. We're I gave him some water. He's like, Nah, come on. Let's do my it for pipes. Real. Let's do it. Let's yeah. Come and one for it's good to somebody. be here, dude. Yeah, pour a little out <laughs> well, for the homies. Short circuit everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not gonna pour it out because beer's expensive. Good stuff. I only brought two. Right. We're gonna pretend like this is like our 12 pack. Hmm. I had a 40 and I passed around. Right. It's the first time I've ever worn a hoodie out of 10 episodes. And really? Yeah, man. So you went hoodied up for me. I went me. hoodied up for you. And you know what's funny is like I put this shirt on. Yeah. And I was like, nah, it's just quite not thuggish enough. But it's white trashy. It's kind of, right. you know. Yeah, I, like, I, I'm in that, yeah. Double wide pimp Yeah, trailer. exactly. Look at and this, this, might, this, this might be Pabst Blue Ribbon. <laughs> yeah. it, it might was. be. We it had that on be. set last week. Yes. But I'm trying to get a sponsor, so now it's just generic. Right. Now it's, it's whatever just, you want it to be. It's whatever beer you need it to be. It is yeah. good. Yeah. We love but it. But it is good. <laughs> See? <laughs> Can we use a sound bite from that from Sully McCall? Yeah. Hey, this is good. Hey, this beer is good. <laughs> Product goes right here. <laughs> Insert your uh, beer of choice here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Silly's funny, man. This uh, is the man. hardest working man in show business, in the comedy business. Right, right. This dude's writing. He's on nine TV shows. He uh, just, got, uh -huh. just got off tour with somebody we're going to talk about. Right. We got a lot to talk about. Like if, you, up, if you like comedy, you're going to get your comedy feel. Boom. Yo, Stevie D, we're we should, about to bring it. Every five minutes, we should stop. Let people rest because they're getting too much comedy. Exactly. They're gonna have too exactly. much comedy. Look at this. Look what this dude's done. Look, I've done some things, man. You got a couple. Yeah, you got a couple I, credits. I, uh, Soul Train Awards. Uh, yeah, I wrote on the Soul Train Awards. Lopez. Uh, Lopez Tonight. I was a writer. BET Awards. The BET. Uh, you got to do the BET Awards. You got to. You, gotta you know, good. a lot of Keep stuff. Cred. Yeah. TV. Scary like, you know what's too. funny is like, I'm I'm really lucky, dude, because I started out. You know, we met in the comedy clubs. Uh -huh. I started out as a stand-up, mm -hmm. and uh, I started when I was in college. I went to UCLA. Okay. Uh, we had a uh, comedy club at UCLA. Did you? And so, yeah. On which campus? Is, uh, yeah, on campus. Like, a bunch of guys that wanted to be comics uh -huh. uh, got together. Didn't have a car to go to any open mics? We didn't have to go to open mics. This is yeah. what we did, dude. This is how gangster we were. We would get together on the weekdays and work on our jokes. Like mm -hmm. we would take our ideas and then just powwow them around the room. And so that's how I started doing stand up. And so what happened was we would do shows in the dorms. We mm -hmm. would invite, we'd have a budget to invite one kind of established comic. Uh -huh. And so all of us would go up first and then the established comic would close the show. Uh -huh. So it was great because like it got us, you know, we, we knew real comics when we were in college. Uh -huh. And so when I finished college, uh, I made that transition into the clubs. And I was like, dude, I mean, college was, it was vital for me just getting my stand-up chops. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up, Jerry Seinfeld did a show at UCLA, and four of us from the comedy club opened for him. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and then it's So contract, that went right on, your first thing on your resume. Well, dude, it was, uh, I'm going to tell you, it was even better than that because four of us opened for him. We each did five minutes, and in the contract, they said the opening act will, can never go cannot do more than 20 minutes. Don't so each do six. five minutes, don't yeah. do six. Yeah. You know, don't do don't five, do 20. <laughs> yeah, exactly, do five minutes. Yeah. And so uh, we did five minutes, his manager was there, mm -hmm. came up to me afterwards, said, I think you have a lot of talent. Uh, you know, I'd like to meet with you. And I was so green in the business, dude, uh -huh. that I called a buddy of mine, Jordan Brady, okay. who uh, is a stand-up and a director, mm -hmm. uh, and I said, hey, do you know this guy, George Shapiro? Is he legit? And he was Shapiro like, Shapiro West? Uh, yeah, exactly. He goes, dude, that's one of the biggest comedy managers in George the game. George Shapiro approached yeah, you. Yeah. And, and I didn't had, know who he you was. You weren't a regular at the Laugh I didn't, Factory. I wasn't, you dude, I was in college. I was a dude that was slanging jokes for books. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need book money. Yeah, exactly. So when he, yeah, he, you know, I asked him, he was like, he's the biggest manager in comedy. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, yeah. I guess I'm going to call him back. Yeah, I'll call him in. You got the payphone in yeah, the hall? that's my man Jordan oh, yeah, Brady yeah, yeah. right there. Remember that, dude? Yeah. 
Yeah, great director, really funny dude. So that was my, you know, he did one of those shows. So mm -hmm. it was like, okay, I got somebody legit. But yeah, dude, like, so I started when I was in college and, you know, stand up, was grinding it out. Uh -huh. and I, I started here in LA, which is like one of the toughest places to start. Yeah, I was talking you know, to, uh, I think it was Darren Carter, somebody about that, or Dwayne yeah, Perkins last week. Yeah. And, and uh, how we're advised to never start in a big city. Right. Like you, right. you get your chops right. somewhere, right. get your tight five, right. and then bring right. it in. Right, get strong and then bring yeah. it here. Yeah. Like I had started here. I would MC at the clubs and, you know, like I, I was lucky because I always had a really good sense of what I wanted to do uh -huh. on stage and who I was. So I was unique, uh -huh. but it was, you know, and I, I felt like starting here, you learn good technique. You yeah. learn from the best. Yeah. Like, you know, at the Laugh Factory when I started, I would MC. Uh, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, mm -hmm. George Wallace, all the best would be there. Look, uh -huh. there's my man Dwayne there Perkins is, right yeah. there. DP. Man, what a nice smile. That dude is commercial yeah, friendly. Yeah. Well, that's one thing I remember about you is like you're always smiling. Yeah. So you make yeah. everyone feel at ease. Right. Like when you hit right. the stage, and I'm silly like that just because I'm not too bright because right. I always smile. You know, <laughs> ignorance is bliss. So I'm always, wait, what, what do I have to be stressed about? Right. It's right. all good, you know, right. got gas in the Trans Am, everything's right. good. Right. But I remember that about you is like you're always Well, I, I'm smiling. only kind of smiling there. I think well, you I'm, look a little thuggish. Yeah, yeah I'm thug a little crowd. thuggish right there. I'm going to save thuggish. a thug question for later. Gonna, right, yeah, we'll go hoodies up. Yeah. We'll have a hoodies up question. <laughs> hoodies up question. Yeah, y'all want the hoodies up question. That'll be later. Question. That's going to be the teaser. We'll get into that. Yeah, I got to think of it first. Yeah, So that's that's how I started doing stand-up. You know what I mean? Like I really was. So did George Shapiro take you into the Laugh Factory or into well, a Well, you know what was funny was like I was a junior in college. I still had a year left. Mm -hmm. And when I found out how legit he was, I was uh -huh. ready to, to let go of college yeah. and be like, I'm, I, you know, I wanted stand-up. Yeah. So I was like, all what right. What were you I, majoring in? Uh, I was a political science major. Okay. Yeah, that mm -hmm. and uh, and student loans. Okay. Yeah. You uh, student loans. Yeah. 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 Minor in student loans. Yeah, yeah. Still paying those student loans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, but yeah, I still had a year left of school. So I started at the Lab Factory and, you know, like it was great because I knew it was going to be my real profession. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like once I was in the club, so I finished, I finished, I graduated and, you know, then I started, you know, hitting the road a little bit. But yeah, I mostly started here, which was great. And That's took great. acting classes. And, and it must have taken some stress off not going in and having to do the open mic. And I was telling um I was telling someone the other day how Jamie is very intimidating. Right. The, Jamie Massad, right. the owner of the Laugh Factory. Right. And they have an open mic there. And people come from all over, you know, the country or whatever to audition Look for him. That. There, there you go, there baby. I am on the marquee. And there on the marquee go. with Michael Richards. Nice. Kramer. Oh. That was Look you. at he was, that. He called I, I was, was that you? That wasn't market? me that, that started that, but I was on that show. Were you there? Yeah, I was on that show that night. And uh, I went on first. And I know I can be a hard act to follow. Yeah. But I didn't mean to make he him go cool yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. mean to make that happen. You know, <laughs> nice. I had a good spot, but I nice. didn't. I didn't think I was going to bring out the, you know, the right, hatred uh, yeah. and racism. I can't follow that. Right. No. What am I going to do? Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There, there I am doing there. my thing. I, I like to rock the hats. Yeah. You know what you I mean? Got it, baby. But I still, you see what I did with that? Yeah. I rocked the hat, but then I went with a, a, a jacket. Nice. So nice. it was respectable. I think I've got one shot of my name. I'm on front of the marquee. Yeah. Because that was my goal. Starting yeah. in comedy, yeah. you drive down the strip and you're like, Ugh. yeah. That's the, that's the mark right that there. Is the, that's yeah, the mark that's to the hit. That's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's when you know you, you're doing it right. My mom came out when I got married. She came out from Kentucky and she'd never been here. First time she'd ever flown on a plane. Really? And I asked Jamie, I was like, Jamie, he's like, buddy, what do you want me to get for your wedding gift? I go, you really want to know? I'm like, uh -huh. this is kind of cheesy, uh -huh. but I'm like, my name's not up this week. It's up sometimes. Right. I go, my mom's coming in town, buddy. Yeah. You want to make it? And I yeah. asked her, I said, mom, what was your? Look at that. That's name cool, on the marquee. Man. You got to have your name on the marquee. Avi. Avi. This is for the ladies. Yeah, that's for the ladies. <laughs> yeah. So, I was, so what I asked, did you, how did your mom react? So I said, mom, what was your best part of the week? And she said, Seeing my son's name on that that there sign oh, at the lab. Right? That's amazing. I was like, what about dude. the wedding? Was that pretty cool? The way? Yeah, that was good too. Yeah, right. I can see a wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I see those all the time. Yeah. Yeah, those come and go. <laughs> right. I was like, but the no, marquee. That's that. good. Yeah. So Look at me killing in for a room full nice. of nobody. So you need to crop that. You need yeah. to Photoshop that. that picture. No, right I, you know what I like about that shot? Why somebody took it, and I, what I really liked about it is that's what stand up is the yeah. real deal. Like you'll do big shows, Two great people? shows, yeah. but those little shows are just as important. And that's, and that's where, you, where you get the work in. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's where you really grind it out. Yeah. Like I'm more excited about those smaller shows nowadays than I am the big really? ones. Like that's I mean, more organic. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's where you do the work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. I went, I went with outs. the glasses. Yeah. I was in my intellectual mode. I'm thinking Drop about some, some knowledge stuff, on you tonight. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. We both wore a hood tonight. I know. I like that. That was, feels right. It's the first show I didn't have like a Western shirt on or something. You normally go yeah. Western shirt? Western shirt, man. Close yeah. my eyes and look in the closet and just pull right. one out. This is good. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. So um, working in front of a couple of people, it can be disruptive, you know, because they, you got to, they, you know, they're hanging on your every word. Right. If you lose them, you can hear them talk. Right. And I was talking to someone the other day about now everyone's got cell phones and you yeah. may be working a bit out yeah. and you're not ready to take it to the Laugh Factory yet. You might, right. You're not ready to take it to right. HBO or The Tonight Show yet. Right. You just, you're just getting your bearings and you're tightening up this joke, but if someone records it and then they put it up right away. Well, that's the new thing about comedy is that, yeah. that we didn't have a few years back is mm -hmm. everything is visual now. Yeah. And people, you know, like I was doing these, these, uh, these dates with Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. and Who? you know, he? uh, yeah, uh, he's a guy. Oh, he was opening yeah, for you? Yeah, and so. Uh, <laughs> that was gonna be my teaser. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I was uh, with uh, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> More about that after the commercial. You, uh, so yeah, you have been on the road, but, Dave. But but, uh, but what I noticed is is that's the new era that we live in. Yeah. Is everybody feels like they have to capture that moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of just letting a moment happen. Being you know what moment? I mean? Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like we're it's like, so into our phones yeah. now. That's you know? a bad picture. Oh, that guy. There he is. There's the guy. He's he's more buff than that. He's all now. jacked up now, isn't he? Yeah, he's buff. He's buff. Is he's he still smoking? Buff. Uh, he smokes he's cigarettes. Yeah. He smokes and works out. Yeah. That's yeah. Get 225 today. Right. That's that's <laughs> quite a yeah. 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 He's buff. He made me like I was like yo. I maybe I need to hit the weights a yeah. little bit. Yeah. I thought I was in pretty good shape until my last guest. Yeah. Todd, Todd Look Howard. at that. I'm Beautiful. always gonna keep it skinny. Look at that. Yeah. Well, that's that's crazy legs. That's yeah. crazy legs in effect. You know. You, you know what? You'd I lose your core audience if you just came you out. You know one what? Day. I don't think buff would work for me. Yeah. On stage. You know what I mean? Like I think I I think. Uh, you know what being a good stand-up is is about being an outsider. Because that was our a defense. Bit. Right? Yeah, because like, I was a skinny kid. I was yeah, 127. Yeah. I graduated from high school. So when I was you graduated from high school? Kid. High school. I was 127. I'm 118 now. Really? I wish I was 127. <laughs> I, was, I was jacked. <laughs> <laughs> but I got up to like the 190s when I was like crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy. Just, Did you play sports just or were you just lifting? No, no, just no. Like, I just knew. Whoa, that's yeah, you. Yeah, I was killing it, dude. But you know. That guy, that guy is, a, is not a, freak a good comedian. And that's not funny. Yeah, when there's started, nothing funny about that. When I started, I would wear like vest on stage. Right. And I remember like Bud Friedman and stuff going, dude, muscles aren't funny. You, no, you don't believe us, not, look at Joe dude. Piscopo. Did, did, once, yeah, see, if so you went you on stage getting like that, freaky, you would meet a lot of girls and get no laughs. Yeah, no <laughs>, laughs. The guys hate you. Right. I remember Johnny Sanchez, who's one of my best friends in comedy, right. who's going to become, I told him just the other day, we were Facebooking, I said, dude, one of the first things I remember you said to me, like you went, you didn't say it to me. You said it right. to the audience about me. Right. You went up after me and you said, "Dude, where do you go? Where's CVD go? Back to the gym? Shouldn't you be at the gym? Why are you yeah, telling jokes?" Yeah, yeah. There's Bud. There's Bud Friedman right yeah, there. Yeah. At Harris, I love that place. One yeah. of my favorite places to work in you Vegas. Harris a lot. Yeah. I do. I love it, man. Right there, right in the mix. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love Vegas. Vegas is like the perfect place to go perform if you're about to do a TV set mm -hmm. because it's middle America. Uh, you really get to try and test your jokes out. Like here in LA, it's hip. It's mm -hmm. it's much hipper. It's a hip than, crowd. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They don't hear about but, kids. Yeah, they. But but in Vegas, because it's middle America, you can really mm -hmm. see how your jokes play. Yeah. And I'm not afraid to be hip there. Uh -huh. But it's like you see. Oh, okay. This is cool comedy out here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You see just how hip you are. Mm -hmm. Is it commercial time? Okay, we're gonna go to a tease. <laughs> you just got off the road with Dave. Shab oh, we already talked about that. Yeah, <laughs> but we didn't talk about it no, a lot. We'll talk about it more. We'll the talk about question. it more. Yeah, we'll get into. We'll go hoodie up. Your family some point. man now. I want to talk about? Yeah, let's talk about just that. Got a learner's permit. Yes. Starting to get yeah. a few gray hairs. Now. I am getting some gray All hairs. Right. Yeah. But you must get props from like her, her school friends. Like, is, oh, it's a good dad's thing. Your dad's crazy legs. It's a good thing to be crazy legs. We'll talk about that. Yeah, let's definitely talk about that. show coming back right after this. Right. We gotta do a drinking game. Right. Every time we say crazy legs. Crazy legs. Crazy. Legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do clients like these and these and these choose and now media? When they've got a message, an audience that they want to reach, why do they dive into our world? They do it because they want mind-bendingly breakthrough creative. They want to take focus. They want results beyond their expectations. And now You've got a boutique creative house that's at your disposal. A passionate, professional team concocting, executing videos that connect your message to your audience like never before. And now dive into our world. Creativity with purpose. See how far 
your message can go. And now, it's your turn. And now media, creating success one video at a time. What up, y'all? We're back. Yeah. So you know we are. For the second half, I'm not going to speak much. I'm just, nah, I'm he's tim- that timidate, dude. Intimidate the he's audience. He's like Macklemore. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice. So I want to talk to you about writing. So uh-huh. a lot of comics, you transition, you're able to bounce back and forth. How does it feel like when you write a killer bit, if you're writing for the BET Awards or if you're writing for The Tonight Show, how does it feel to see someone else kill right with a joke that you Well, wrote? you know, it, I mean, it's interesting, dude. Like, I'm lucky because, you know, like I get to do a bunch of different things. As a writer, uh, you know, it's, it's, you, you learn how to write for somebody else's voice. Mm-hmm. You, know, um, you know, when I was a, a writer on The Tonight Show, you know, I had to really learn how to write for, for Jay Leno's voice, uh-huh. you know what I mean? And Jay Leno is, you know, middle America. Middle America. And he considers himself an everyman, right? Yeah. So he calls himself an equal opportunity offender. Mm-hmm. And so what I found was, I'd been doing stand-up for about 15 years already before I got hired at the Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. And so I had my point of view pretty well defined. Mm-hmm. When I was writing there, I had to dial it back, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting, like, you'll take... I learned to be really disciplined there, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Because, you know, you're writing, he loves to read jokes. The monologue is about 27 to 35 jokes. And he does the, the longest monologue. The longest monologue it? on television. It's like 13 minutes or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, but he loves reading jokes. Yeah. They say about, he reads about a thousand jokes to go into, uh, <laughs> into the monologue. So you're really trying to get into a very small window. Oh, that's there you go, uh, with that's, Chris. There, there I am. Uh, that was when I wrote for Jamie Foxx on Saturday Night Live. Oh, nice. Which was great because uh, so he you know, brought you. Yeah, he brought me in. I was writing he on the, you and Chris? I was writing on the BET Awards uh, for Cedric the Entertainer, uh-huh. and I was also performing on there also. And so Jamie introduced Stevie Wonder as the closing oh, act. Wow. And so we were backstage, and he was like, "Hey, I'm doing Saturday Night Live." you know, you want to come get out on Saturday Night Live? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Uh, so, yeah. You know we, you got juice when you can bring your own joke Yeah, on yeah, well, they don't really have a lot of guest writers on that show. Usually guest mm. writers are former cast members that come in to do a special sketch or something. Uh-huh. So it was, it was really great for me to be a writer on that show and drop myself in that process. And I wrote... Uh, I wrote something that, that really kind of broke out and went viral. I wrote this sketch where Jamie played a ding dong. Okay. And it was right when the Twinkies were going out of business. Oh, yeah. And Twinkies were getting all the props, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I just came up with this idea. It's like, what about the other fine hostess treats? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not really getting anything. And, and I just figured, I oh, you know what Twinkies. we'll have? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it would be funny to get Jamie dressed up as this giant ding dong yeah. going off, yeah. ranting about how he's not getting any love <laughs> as a ding dong. In yeah. fact, that was one of the, the big lines from that sketch is, you know, y'all ain't got no love for the ding dong. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it's a little naughty. Yes. The and yeah. So, so that was great. Like, yeah. uh, and, uh, and Seth Meyers is the, is the head writer on SNL. Okay. So, uh, you know, we did that in, in the weekend update. Mm-hmm. So he came in as a character for the holidays. It was really cool. Uh-huh. SNL was like, uh, it's like going to the Fort Knox of comedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, it's like the Harvard so of much, the comedy. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much history there. Yeah. And you know, like there's this hallway that has all the, uh, you know, all the past cast members and you see like everybody who's anybody Seth, in yeah. comedy. Yeah. yeah. There's Seth right there. Yeah. Seth's great. I really enjoyed working with him. He's leaving now, right? Yeah. He's leaving. Yeah, he's yeah. going to take over Jimmy Fallon's spot. So he's about to do his own, his own thing. So um, shifting everybody yeah, around there. Yeah. yeah so nice. it's all, it's all moving. It's all. So you have that on your part. credit now. Yeah. I mean, You've you know, yeah, I read, Live. yeah. Guest writer for yeah. SNL. Yeah. And in fact, that sketch that I wrote, the CEO of Hostess saw the sketch and reached out to Jamie. So it was like really amazing just to take something that was in my brain that was yeah. like, oh, this might be funny, and just to see what kind of impact it made. Like, now it really backing blew up the ding dong truck at your house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. They should be. We should be eating those right now. Right, exactly. <laughs> we got exactly. love for the ding dongs. <laughs> we got love for the ding dongs. <laughs> see that picture you saw earlier where right. they have a shirt on? Right. <laughs> <laughs> With the caption. <laughs> Twinkies. So, Are they so yeah, business? man, like it's like the, you know, the writing side of it is, is I really like it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there's something about sitting down and creating something and making it work. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I feel it makes me even better at writing my own stuff. Yeah. You it's a more I mean? disciplined part Look of your brain. Look at that. Oh, I was about to, oh, oh, that was see, my question. Let me Hold tell on, you. Take that away for a second. Yeah, take that down. Take you that did down. not see no, that. No, you didn't see that Hold yet. on a minute. Because I just, I wrote a book and it is a different part. It's a discipline 
that, and it's more cerebral, where you're sitting yeah. down by yourself right. and writing something out. Right. Which brings me to my thug question. All right. Uh-oh, it's, it's they time, They were drinking y'all. anyway. It was drinking time. anyway. It's time to thug it oh, up. Put yeah. your hoodies Before on. Before we do that, let me just say Put your crazy legs. On. Crazy legs. Crazy legs. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got a dream. For our UK peeps. Mm-hmm. We love you in the UK. Mm-hmm. All right, here's my That's for my question. boys in the UK. All right, my hoodies up. Question. Hoodie it up. Hoodie it up, son. So, hoodie it up. I bet you ain't writing no book, though. You ain't writing Yo, no what? book. What? What it called? What? What it called? You don't think I wrote a book. <laughs> you, you don't, don't think no I wrote you a book. You ain't writing no book. Yo, I wrote a book. <laughs> You want to know what my book called? What's your book called? 150 Ways to Tell If You Ghetto. What? Yeah, there ain't huh. no 150 Ways. Hoodies up, yeah. y'all. Hoodies if you're a hoodie up, up, if you're a hoodie up, right. you might be. Um, right. You know so you're you ghetto that. if you ever try to sneak a 40 ounce into church. <laughs> what? What? Can I get what? a? We need Can like I a, get a? We need like a sound bite right yeah, there. Can we, we do. get a? We do. <laughs> we need, you know, we need these chairs to be on hydraulics I right know. now. You know hot. you ghetto if you uh, beep, beep, beep. if you ever uh, kept food stamps on a money clip. Nice. What? Yes. It's ghetto, y'all. You yo. know you ghetto. You what know else? you ghetto if your teachers are afraid to teach you. What? <laughs> what? You know you ghetto. That looks got... about right. Here's an A. Yeah, right. Uh, you, you're very, te- very, very smart. You're going <laughs> don't, far. Don't shoot me. You yeah, have a wrong. career in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you know you ghetto if you... Uh, if you uh, if if there's graffiti on your shower curtain, what? <laughs> nice. What? Nice. So did you and Sean and who else wrote that? Well, I'll tell you something. Chris? We were yeah, Chris Spencer, right. Sean Wayans, and myself wrote that. Okay. And it actually, uh, we were while we were shooting "Don't Be a Menace," we were on the set. You mm. know, it's long hours on the set. Uh, look at that. Go Available get that. on your Kindle. And look at that. Six stars. Oh, great stocking stuff. Yeah, stuffer. that's the ultimate stocking stuff. Whoa, six what? stars. Six stars, son. You know, because they don't make seven. Nope. <laughs> if they did, it would be seven. <laughs> Hoodies up, y'all. Seven. <laughs> I'm from would, Kentucky. Seven. It would be seven. <laughs> Believe My that. My three-year-old daughter's going, Daddy, uh, you need to do more but, homework. <laughs> But uh, so we were on the set of Don't Be a Menace, long hours. We started doing these these hood jokes back, like you know your ghetto if, uh-huh. you know, and uh, and it was like in the same spirit of the Jeff Boxworthy yeah, yeah. books. He did okay. Because yeah, the redneck and the hood are all yeah. the same. Yeah. So uh, it just turned into something yeah. where it's like, yo, we need to do something with yeah. this and come out with a book, and we yeah. did. And, nice. You know, there's a lot of good jokes in there's there. Some good jokes. So if you get a chance, get that 150. If you're ways. from the hood, if you're from like if you're from a, a poor part like you know there's no right i was telling uh kira satanovich i had on the show and she was like oh what do you know about i was like and she's poor, from, poor, she's yeah. from san fran she's yeah. from san fran yeah and i said she actually went to high school with my cousin oh yeah yeah so she said we, she was like this melting pot yes. of cultures and like yeah. chinese and everything and i was telling her that we i grew up on food stamps so right. i was right. like and poor isn't prejudice right no i was i not. couldn't be like no i got right. you know these right. new you know right so i remember going and handing the book to the person right and letting right them, why's your money orange <laughs> son yeah, yeah. why your money yeah. orange i was like <laughs> and then you see a girl from your school behind right. you like, i'm good i'll come right. back later right save right. that baloney i'll come back for right that. get on your bike you done your little, <laughs> your little huffing get the hell out of there yeah 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 we had those coming up man yeah. i was the yeah. oldest of seven so were you yeah, even if we had money. So you seven, went to college and everything. They're like, we're out of money. Right. No, I, I. You know what? I actually put myself through school. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was like, yo, you got six other people to feed. I'm gonna yeah. give y'all a break. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. I was My mom's good like, like college. That. Yeah. Man, how you going to college? Yeah. Well, Look funny. at that. There's Kara yeah. right there. I love Kara. She's great stand up. Pretty lady. Yeah. She's. Funny, you know what man. I mean? She's good. She was. She was grilling me. Yeah. You know what's funny is, I was supposed to go to uh, WKU in Bowling Green, Western uh-huh. Kentucky University. Uh-huh. I bailed. I was all because pretty much if you're if you're a resident of Kentucky, you can get into any Kentucky school. Oh, really? So, like, yeah, they, they're like, you're good. You're right. going to fail after one semester anyway. Right, right. I bailed and never showed up. My first book signing is on that campus. Really? My book comes out, yeah, my book comes out oh, that's in March. Great. My first book signing is at you might Western get an Kentucky University. Doctorate. You don't need college, boy. What? <laughs> Just write a book, yeah. y'all. Write yeah. a book. <laughs> Blow it up. Just don't call me or Sully. Write a book. <laughs> We're out here. Uh-oh. We t- oh, Uh-oh. crazy legs. Is it that time? Crazy legs. Did we just say crazy legs? I think I said it twice. What? Crazy legs. Two times. Funny, I poured Tuli some water, and he's mm-hmm. like, uh, it smells mm-hmm. like water. Right. Why are we <laughs> drinking water? <laughs> yeah. On the Stevie D show. That and ain't the right. The daughter's getting her license now. I thought we'd set a good example. Yeah, please. We have designated yeah. drivers tonight. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. We're good. The Trans Am <laughs> has a show for tonight. Right. It's Hasselhoff. <laughs> Hasselhoff. Is that your ideal car, Trans Am? Yeah, yeah. I love Hasselhoff. Well, I had the Smokey and the, the Bandit, but 
people unfortunately think all trans ams are the same. Right. No, they're not. So like they've got the Hasselhoff, the eighty three trans am that right. you know, it right. just loses its coolness right. after when you yeah, see yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. the meth dealers the, driving the it, you're like, one is timeless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it, then yeah, yeah, but then after 80, that, the '80s one yeah, yeah. is sketchy. It's yeah. like dudes with you've got some explaining to do. Selling meth out of and the trunk. And if that <laughs> you Trans Am is, is you're not taking parked, my daughter out. <laughs> yeah, if that Trans Am is parked anywhere near a high school, <laughs> absolutely sketchy. Yeah. In fact, that's hoodies <laughs> off. <laughs> hoodies <laughs> off. Because he has a daughter, and I have a daughter. Yeah, I have a I have a 16 year old, and. So I'm normally not this happy. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm happy to be out of the house. Right. right. So you're getting the teenage drama. Right. You're I am right getting now? it. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting it. Like they're, they're no matter always, how cool you're, you're like they're on the road mean. with Chappelle, but they're sometimes, always mean. Yeah. They are you're always like, mean. They're I just so got mean. off the road with Dave Chappelle. She's so mean. I just get nicer because it's amusing to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you're not gonna make me crazy. Yeah. I'm gonna enjoy this. Yeah. And let you be mean. No matter how cool you are. Yeah. You're, you're on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. You're killing it. No, you're, you're going to say something sometime that she rolls her eyes. Oh, yeah. No, she rolls her eyes all the time. She yeah. rolls her eyes, calls me old. Yeah. Yeah, all Out that. of touch, Dad. Yeah. Dad, you're old. Crazy legs. You're never, old, Dad. Never be out of touch. No. All right, let's plug your website. Oh, you can go. Uh, I'm on I'm on uh, Twitter, Suli McCullough, S-U-L-I-M-C-C-U-L-L-O-U-G-H. Boom. IMDB, boom. Mm -hmm. You can go You're there. You're going to be throwing DVD show on that IMDB tonight. My website is sulimcullough.com. S-U-L-I-M-C-C-U-L-L-O-U-G-H. There you what? go. What? With the glasses. With the glasses. I'm on Facebook, too. A cool picture. You see I photobombed Blake Look, Griffin. Did you see that? <laughs> I like those. You see that? Nice seats, though. Yeah, we had great seats. Yeah. I, I went to UCLA, so that's at a UCLA basketball game. Oh, nice. Game. That's your boy? And I took my son. And How old is your son? My son is turning nine uh, later this month. When did he lose his teeth? Uh, he, lost did you do that? he lost him in a fight. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. No, he did no, not. He didn't. Oh. No, no, he didn't. No, he would have. 